Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So before I get started, I just want to take a second to say hello to Duke from World Bigfoot Central. Duke's been a follower of Cryptids Canada for quite some time. And last night we spoke for almost two hours about what else? Bigfoot. And it was great. It was like a good meeting of the minds. And one of these days, you never know, we may come together for something special, but I'll keep you updated on that. But in the meantime, go over and check out his channel. I think you guys would like it. He does some really interesting interviews and he's been around forever. So yeah, just wanted to point that out to you. And while you're there, leave him a comment. Tell him that Leslie says hi. You know me, if it's about a cryptid and it's interesting, I'm going to share it with you. You can take that to the bank for sure. Okay, so I'm not looking forward to this part. Oh my goodness. So this is episode number 10, about uh, 15 years with the Bigfoot. And for those of you who are emotionally invested, well, load up on the tissues. Okay, guys, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's get to the story. Hello, Leslie and Croutons. I hope you're all doing well. I struggled with doing this segment because it is and was very painful for me. I have never put this into a written form. So I'll do my best to relay what happened. In the winter of 2013, it was pretty cold and windy. Mama and her family had already gone to the tall mountains, Flagstaff area in Arizona to stay for the winter. Every now and then, families of Sasquatch would trade off areas they were familiar with. This happened to be one of those years, though I didn't know it until the spring. A new family had come to the area. I could sense them, but there wasn't a connection with them. Later during summer, I did feel a familiar essence. It was Babu, but he didn't come very close to where I was at. It wasn't until the fall when Mama didn't come back to the area and Babu was courting the girl from a new family. He did bring her by a few times in the summer, a sort of introduction, but she was too shy to interact with. I suppose she never had any connection with human mankind before. During that summer, Loner was staying closer. He had even built a new cave on the eastern mountain up on the ridge. I even got to watch him do that through my binoculars. Mama wasn't as attentive as she used to be before the abduction. She would communicate very little now. I didn't know much about what was going on. I found it unusual. She and her family would be here all winter this year. Several nights I'd hear wood knocks, but couldn't figure out where there would be sturdy enough trees for that. Mama had said, Loner is teaching Babu what he needs to know and how to avoid human mankind when traveling. I found out from Mama about Loner two years prior. The main reason he had hate in his eyes towards human mankind was because his mate was killed, either directly or indirectly by our kind. Loner had been a clan leader for his mate's clan, but when she died, he left. His anger was so raw in any contact with human mankind, in his eyes, was dealt with in the manner of the old ways of the Sasquatch people. She said, this is why most of us would go quiet when Loner came to the area. He was brutal in the way of his people for having a connection with human mankind. My eyes filled with tears for his loss, but I also wasn't excusing his actions towards his people and how he dealt with it. Mama said, something in you made Loner see the depth of your own sorrow that touched him deep. 
I was trying so hard to hold back tears, but they kept slipping out. I asked Mama, what does Loner do now? She smiled with a nod of her own head. She said, he is still traveling and mapping, but now he is doling out punishments, but helping when there is a need. So I guess my sorrow changed Loner's view of human mankind, even though there isn't trust all over. Mama also said, when Loner is ready, he'll tell you what you need to know about him. I thanked her and decided to go to bed. It was around midnight. It was a bit over a week since I'd had any contact with Mama, and I was thinking she might have been ill. So I waited another week, then sent out an inquiry through telepathy. Nothing. For several nights in January. I kept sending, but still nothing. I couldn't feel Mama or her energy. Finally, I felt Babu. It seemed strange, like absent or something. The next night, I walked towards the back fence, watching my steps over the rocky path. As I walked, I was hearing this deep chant-like rhythm. As I reached the fence, I saw Babu. He was doing a chant, slightly rocking back and forth, side to side. He felt solemn and determined as he chanted. I could feel my heart swelling. Tears seemed to well up. But why? Why was I getting so emotional over this sound? As I faced Babu, I asked what this song was. He said, it's a blessing song. A blessing song? Oh, how sweet. Thank you. His demeanor didn't change. He was more focused on the chant. I stayed put without interrupting again. After an hour and a half or so, when Babu seemed to take a break, I did ask him why he was singing this song. He wouldn't answer and started again as he walked backwards away from me. I could still hear the deep chant the further away as he left me standing in the dark. I didn't understand why he was singing this blessing song towards me. It was towards the end of January in 2014 now, and I still hadn't felt Mama. Loner wasn't in the area either. So I tried to reach out to anyone who was able to hear my telepathy. A voice came back. I sort of recognized it. I think it was one of the Sasquatch up by the chloride. He said, several females went south to pick children up who were abandoned. They were the little ones, and no one knew why they had been abandoned. I thanked him and waited another few more days before reaching out again. I thought about what was told and thought it very odd seeing as how the Sasquatch people are protective of their young and how or who saw these children abandoned. Things didn't make sense. Two or three more days passed and again I tried to reach out. The next night, Babu showed up. He seemed upset with me but came closer to me than he had ever done before. His eyes were glistening the same way Mama's did when she asked to adopt me. He was trying to speak vocally, but it didn't happen. He laid his huge hand on top of the fence, and I placed mine on top of his. It was warm and leathery feeling. A soothing sensation flowed through me. He said, You want to know where Mama is? As our minds connected, I began to see trees and bushes several Sasquatch running with children, some on the ground while the littlest ones were being carried. There was a commotion going on. I heard human mankind voices everywhere, yelling and gunshots going off. I saw Mama pick up a baby and was hurting two other children in front of her. She looked frantic, her eyes darting around looking for some place to go. I saw two men in camouflage with rifles with scopes following her, chasing her and the children. She ran behind a large bush, the children still in front of her. She had her hand down, pushing them along the way. I heard two loud gunshots. I heard Mama scream out, and then I saw her body fall. My heart broke and shattered instantly. I couldn't feel Mama anymore. Babu pulled his hand out from under mine. He looked into my eyes 
They were full of tears. I asked, Were you there too? He looked down and looked at me again. His eyes were glistening more. I could actually see tears. I'm so sorry, Babu. I didn't know. Oh my God, this can't be true. It can't be. Babu stood looking at me. I didn't know what to do or say. Nothing is going to bring Mama back. His eyes still looking in my eyes. He could feel me inside. I was crushed and he couldn't do anything about it. Tears flowed. I could barely see. I don't know when Babu left. I was in such a stupor. I became so angry. So angry I was shaking. I wanted to find those people. I wanted to hurt them as they did me. I still do. But in reality... I probably will never find out who they are. I got online on my computer and I started looking for anyone who might know what went down. It took me a couple of weeks, but I found a few people who witnessed a few Sasquatch being loaded into a covered military type truck. The people said there weren't any markings on the trucks and the men looked like military with camo suits on, but no insignia. I still to this day don't know who could have done this. It isn't right. They took a very important and special person away from me and her family. Later I started hearing there were supposed kill teams looking for Sasquatch, but no names or locations were ever mentioned. Loner has been close to me ever since and has moved with me to where I live now in the Midwest. I could not stay in Arizona after losing Mama. Too many memories and too much anger. Loner is still here with me. He is still sharing things with me and even helping my friend with items around the house. When I can write again, I will. Bringing Mama's death up has again broken me and I will still need time to grieve. Thank you and all the listeners for acknowledging Mama. She was special and always will be. What she shared is always coming back to me with new understanding as I grow more. Thank you, Leslie, for allowing me to tell my truths and experience with Mama. All my love, Julie Turtle Hagen. I am so sorry that you've had to go through that, Julie. That's a terrible loss. And sadly, because of the government's refusal to admit that these creatures exist, they have no protection, and that's really sad in this day and age. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, of course, as much as I did. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening, and we'll see you back here in a day or two. You know, I love ya. Oh, and also, I'm putting the link to World Bigfoot Central in the description box, which is below the video. Okay, guys, you know I love ya. Bye for now.